A landmark new study by McMaster University finds consumption of ultra-processed foods is linked with a myriad of different health issues, including high blood pressure, increased triglycerides, increased insulin, adiposity or weight gain, and more. Let's break down this study that was just published yesterday. We're reviewing here. This is the uh, cbc.ca. The title of this article, and this is a lay piece, and we'll get into the actual study momentarily, is McMaster University study links ultra-processed food to range of health risks. Researchers study data from a demographically accurate sample of 6,000 Canadians. New research out of McMaster University in Ontario has directly linked consumption of ultra-processed foods, a category that includes not just traditional junk foods, but items marketed as healthy as well, to several health issues. The paper was written by McMaster University kinesiology researchers and published in the peer-reviewed journal Nutrition and Metabolism yesterday or Wednesday. The researchers found that consumption of ultra-processed foods was linked with correlating levels of high blood pressure and cholesterol and was not affected by an individual's age, size, and level of activity. I think this is really important because there's a few things that we really want to parse out. Now, you might be thinking, well, okay, Mike, I already know that processed foods are bad for me. Yes, but what was, what was interesting about this study is they found no, no correlation with blood glucose and ultra-processed food consumption. I think this is really important because they focus on triglycerides as well as insulin and HDL and LDL cholesterol, which we're gonna really dive into as well as body fat percentage. But first, my friends, I wanna dive into these details, but I wanna thank this video show sponsor, the folks over at MauiNuiMedicine.com, the makers of the highest quality meat on the planet. This is wild game meat that can be delivered right to your house. It's really, really tasty. We rely upon this, especially when we travel. My daughter is an athlete, and so it's really hard to get grass-fed organs as well as grass-fed or wild-caught game meat when we're out on the road participating in track and cross-country events. As you know, if you have children, it's hard to get them to eat wild game meat or heart or kidney, liver, spleen, or things like that. So you can get this all in a beef jerky-like format. The venison sticks are phenomenal. But what I love about Maui Nui venison is the nutrient density and the nutrient quality. Researchers at Utah State University, namely Stephen Van Vallette, has actually studied the composition of this meat, finding it's enriched in phytonutrients, mitochondrial enzymes, and different proteins. And the protein to calorie ratio is among the best out of any meat that you're going to find at the grocery store, whether it's Costco or even Whole Foods or Safeway. It's some of the best meat on the planet. You can see just how dark, rich, and red this meat is because of the mitochondria and the different proteins from these wild animals. So you can save by going to MauiNuiVenison.com forward slash H-I-H. I will put links in the description below. If you haven't tried the venison sticks, you got to do so right now. So click the link in the description below. So getting back to the article, I think this is really important and I'm going to share with you some of the tables and the facts and figures. You know, I have a lot of clients who will come in with blood work and they're freaking out. They're like, oh my gosh, my fasting glucose was 99. I'm on the trajectory of developing prediabetes. And I think it's important to recognize that glucose is an acute phase react and it fluctuates. You could be fasted for 16 hours and go and get your blood drawn. You're sitting in the phlebotomy chair. You're getting a little nervous because you see this, you know, 20 gauge needle coming out. You're like, oh my gosh, I, I don't like venipuncture. I don't want to be, who wants to be poked by a relatively large needle? Just that stress alone, even in a fasted state, can increase your blood glucose to the point where you may appear to be pre-diabetic. And so I think what I love about this article is they looked at other things such as insulin and triglycerides as well as blood pressure, waist circumference, and beyond. So I think that's really important because in this coverage piece, they say higher consumption of these processed foods is also linked to higher levels of blood fat known as triglycerides, a type of fat found in the blood which in high amounts contributes to a risk of heart disease, stroke, and other diseases, study co-author, PhD student Angela Barrick told the CBC. She also said that the research shows that processed foods change how available the foods as nutrients are to the body and that consumption meant higher risk of health issues in every demographic that the researchers looked at. Many links between the consumption of these foods and the cardiometabolic risk factors remain significant even after adjusting for body mass index, suggesting that ultra processed foods may influence health through mechanisms beyond weight gain, such as inflammation, insulin resistance, and poor metabolic regulation, all well-established predictors of heart disease and type 2 diabetes, McMaster said in a press release. This association persisted even after adjusting for physical activity, smoking, the total amount of food consumption, and socioeconomic factors, including income and education. This is really important. 
because we often focus on these social determinants of health. Well, you know, your education level or where you live and your income and uh, food scarcity and all these other factors, race and ethnicity and so forth. But the associations between processed food consumption and poor health were present even after adjusting for all these different sort of intangible variables, as well as physical activity, smoking and beyond. So I think this is really important. And this goes to say that really no consumption of ultra processed food is safe. Now, I highlight this because even seemingly educated, wealthy people here in the West, they feed their children ultra processed food often. You know, you go to a friend's house and the kids are having Capri Sun and Pop Tarts and white bread and, you know, microwave sandwiches and beyond. So I think it's, it's just important to understand that all these foods, deli meat, frozen foods, hot dogs, potato chips, uh, these are common foods that people eat all the time. There's really no safe amount. And so we should be consuming whole unprocessed foods made from scratch as much as possible. And, and I know that's really hard. Uh, but what I also thought was unique is seemingly healthy foods, such as protein bars and breakfast cereals, fell into this category as well. And how many times do you go into someone's house where they have a lot of money and you see Cinnamon Toast Crunch and Wheat Thins and Wheaties and Raisin Bran in the pantry and these are what the, their kids are eating because they're like, well, it's high in fiber. And there's this little icon on the front that's endorsed by the American Heart Association. So these foods must be healthy. Well, this study found there's no safe amount of these foods. For every incremental or iterative increase in consumption of these so-called healthy foods, protein bars and cereals, there was a linear increase with all these different biomarkers that are linked with poor health outcomes, such as increased body mass index, increased belly fat, waist circumference, blood pressure, blood triglycerides, and blood insulin. And so that's where I want to focus a little bit on table three here. These are all sorts of different quartiles. You know, so the, the lowest quartile is the folks that, that don't consume any of these foods. And the fourth quartile is the group that consumes up to five servings a day or more of ultra processed foods. And you can see here the p-value is 0.001, mean, meaning if you were to look at this data a thousand times, it would repeat itself 999 times. And there's a strong statistical association, even after adjusting for socioeconomic status, race, income level, education level, and so forth, with consumption of processed food and increased body mass index, increased waist circumference, both systolic and diastolic blood pressure, but here's what's interesting. Let's look at blood glucose because I know a lot of you are like, oh, my fasting glucose is normal. I must be healthy. Well, we need to move beyond blood glucose and even hemoglobin A1C. I think this is really interesting because A1C is highly variable. And so in our blood work cheat sheet over at highintensityhealth.com, we have uh, new markers, the glycomark marker, as well as the 1,5-AG marker and fructosamine. And we recommend everyone do those in addition to A1C and insulin and glucose because there's a lot of variability in hemoglobin A1C. It may not be the best biomarker because, you know, if your red blood cells break down at a slower rate than Sally, who's break down at a faster rate, your A1C levels could appear to be the same, but your insulin fructosamine and 1,5-AG could be a lot different. And so I think it's important that we don't bet the farm on hemoglobin A1C. And we certainly don't bet the farm on a one-time facet glucose, either high or low in the optimal range. So I think that's important. But let's look at one of my favorite markers here. This is the triglyceride level as well as C-reactive protein. This is really interesting. So C-reactive protein, of course, is a marker of generalized inflammation. The more processed food you consume, the higher your C-reactive protein. I was working with a client several weeks ago who said, you know what, my CRP is super elevated and, and the doctors do not know why. Well, she has gained 60 pounds over the last eight years and doesn't exercise and it's relatively clean, but she admitted around three o'clock at her office place, she works for a major corporate company that you're probably familiar with. You know, she would have her Reese's peanut butter cup and a Twix bar and a Snickers bar and, and all those ultra processed calories started to literally cause her to be more and more inflamed and, and gain more and more weight. And so you can see here, there's a iterative increase in C-reactive protein that corresponds with the consumption of ultra processed food. Well, let's look at another biomarker known as your white blood cell count, WBC. Well, it turns out for every increase in consumption of ultra processed foods, including protein bars and cereals, there is an increase in your white blood cell count, which as you may know, actually predicts the onset of type two diabetes. Having a low white blood cell count 
get high fasting glucose and insulin suggests that you are less likely to develop full-blown type 2 diabetes compared to if you have a high white blood cell count with the same levels of glucose and insulin. I think that's really important. Let's look at triglycerides. I love looking at triglycerides. As many of you know, I think it's an under- recognized and under-emphasized biomarker that reflects overall metabolic health. And there is, as you might guess, a linear iterative increase in statistical association with higher blood triglycerides and consumption of ultra-processed foods. So the more processed foods that you have, the stronger the connection there is with a rise in blood triglycerides, which as you heard about in the lay coverage piece here, is independently correlated with risk of heart attack, stroke, and Alzheimer's disease and beyond as is insulin. When you compare the lowest consumers of ultra-processed foods compared to the highest consumers of ultra-processed foods, the insulin levels are literally about uh, tenfold different. And so I think that's really important for folks to understand. So it's not just about your glucose. It's not just about your LDL cholesterol. We're talking about C-reactive protein, white blood cell counts, HDL, fasting insulin, triglycerides, and beyond. I think that's really important. Last but certainly not least, you can see an inverse association between ultra-processed food consumption and HDL cholesterol. And this was statistically significant even after adjusting for all those socioeconomic uh, demographic variables and beyond. So the more junk food and more processed food you consume, your HDL goes down. And we know this to be true. And so that's why I really do like looking at the triglyceride to HDL ratio. So let's go on and, and hear uh, what these investigators have to say in the discussion section of this paper. They say, to the best of our knowledge, this study is the first to assess associations between ultra-processed food intake and a range of cardiometabolic risk factors using a nationally representative sample of Canadian adults. Our findings reveal that in those with the highest ultra-processed food consumption quartile had significantly higher body mass index, waist circumference, diastolic blood pressure, hemoglobin A1C, c ratchet protein, white blood cell count, insulin, and triglycerides, even after adjusting for socio-demographic and lifestyle factors. These results align with studies in other populations, such as the U.S. National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey and a Spanish Mediterranean diet cohort, both of which found that high ultra-processed food intake correlates with a range of unfavorable cardiometabolic outcomes independent of obesity status and diet quality. They say, we found consistent associations between ultra-processed food intake and markers of obesity, body mass index, and waist circumference, reinforcing evidence from studies linking ultra-processed foods with rising overweight and obesity rates in Canada, the U.S., and other countries. Additionally, diastolic but not systolic blood pressure was elevated with higher ultra-processed food intake, consistent with longitudinal findings from Brazilian adults, increased levels of hemoglobin A1C levels, and fasting insulin associated with high intake of ultra-processed food consumption highlighted a potential link to impaired glucose metabolism, echoing global findings that connect high ultra-processed food diets with type 2 diabetes risk. Our analyses, however did not reveal significant associations between ultra-processed food intake and blood glucose levels, potentially due to only half of the participants providing fasting glucose, which I think is interesting. Again, I think glucose is a decent biomarker, but there are so many things independent of the foods that you eat that can influence your glucose levels, such as stress, sleep issues, and beyond. So I've had several clients book a $300 consultation with me because their fasting glucose was like 95 and they're freaked out, but everything else was totally fine. And they're sort of not understanding how other factors, like if you go for a run, guess what happens? Your glucose goes up. If you go in the sauna, guess what happens? Your blood glucose go up, goes up. That doesn't mean that running or exercise or going in the sauna is bad for you. It's just glucose is a marker that will bounce around based upon stress, activity level, heat, and beyond. All right, now what was interesting is there was a lack of connection between meat consumption and all of these different biomarkers. We hear so much that meat is unhealthy. Oh my gosh, you know, you need to go on a plant-based diet, go on a vegan diet. Meat is incredibly unhealthy. It's linked with all these health, health ailments, but in this population of 6,000 people, that actually wasn't the case. Things like breakfast bars, breakfast cereals, protein bars, uh, hot dogs, uh, of course, those were correlated independently with all these other risk factors, but not meat. So that's what I wanted to share with you. They, Lastly, but not least, they said, 
Our study importantly considered the effect of fruit and vegetable consumption on the relationship between ultra-processed food consumption and cardiometabolic risk factors. Interestingly, interestingly, we observed that associations between ultra-processed food, diastolic blood pressure, hemoglobin A1C, and C-reactive protein became non-significant after controlling for fruit and vegetable intake. So it appears that if you have things like berries or strawberries, raspberries, uh, apples, and, and so forth, uh, that those fruits and possibly other vegetables help mitigate the harms of ultra processed food. So that's important to understand. So if your child just loves cereal, let's say, at least put some blueberries in the cereal or cut up some organic raspberries or wash some organic strawberries and put it in the cereal to help mitigate some of that. So they do note that fruit and some vegetables are protective and they help ameliorate some of the harmful effects of ultra processed foods. I would like to know what you think of this study and this review. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that like button. Thank you for subscribing to this channel and this video, and we'll catch you on a future one down the road.